Nadine, before I tell you this, there's a trigger warning. I need you to visualize as I tell you my story. So as I'm speaking, please just close your eyes and visualize Nadine with me. Nadine, when I met her, was about 15. Sometimes she looked a little bit younger, but usually she looked older. She was mixed race and had definitely had Latino in her. She had this mad curly hair that she would either wear loose around her face or up with these little gels curled to the side of her face. She mostly wore it down and the length was almost to her elbows. Chocolate brown and curly and always shiny. It was a kind of hair that made people double take because it was stunning. Her skin was always clear. She wore lots of makeup, even though she didn't need to. Her eyes were green in the shape of a cat's and she would use this black eyeliner to make them stand out more with lots of mascara. Sometimes if she looked at you, it would make you catch your breath because she was truly beautiful, like a doll. Her figure was heart stopping. She would wear these jeans and a crop top and she would just kill it when she walked into a room. When the dean dressed up, it'd be pointless for anyone to even bother because all eyes were on her. She was breathtaking and I adored her. Close your eyes and see her if you can. Imagine her voice with its little streets twang and a giggle that made the boy's hearts beat faster. Nadine was a girl that many of the girls wanted to be like. She had a relationship with one of the elders and always seemed to have new clothes and new stuff. She would go off to raves in the car with loads of men and come back early hours of the morning with money, drink, anything. She would go and visit people at the weekend and when she came back, she would have more money and drugs. It used to confuse me. Our older would often come and tell Nadine where she had to go, like go here, go there. Sometimes she would argue and cry and sometimes she wouldn't, but she always went. But the bit that confused me as a child was even though he told her to go, when she come back, he was always angry with her. No matter how much stuff or money she brought back to him and she gave it all to him, he would take her up to the room and you'd hear him shouting out saying she was a slag and a bitch and a whore. The words would boom around the block of flats where we lived. Then you would hear the hitting, the hard slaps and the screams and then a lot of crying and then silence. And then the noisy and violent sounding sex, usually with Nadine begging him to stop. And sometimes, sometimes when he was really angry with her, the older would take others in the room with him. Now, if you're hearing this, I would imagine you've realized that Dean was being sexually exploited in the worst, worst way. But as a 13 year old child, I had no clue what was going on or why. All I knew was is that I didn't want that to happen to me ever. When the Dean first took an interest in me, she took me to get my hair done and got me cleaned up. I have no doubt now as an adult that she only had one intention for me, child sexual exploitation. But it didn't go down like that, not for a long time. She fixed my hair, she fixed me up, and she started taking me around with her. She, she had other girls that followed her around. She took us to places where sexualized stuff took place, a crack house a few times, a few brothels. These all looked like houses, and I didn't really know what was going on, but I knew what they were there for. I never got involved in any of it. The stuff that was going on in places that we went to, I just kept quiet and kept out of the way. I was usually with the boys and not with Nadine, so I was never that part of it, not the sexual element. I mostly kept away from it. But one night I was out with Nadine and she took me and a few other girls to what looked like a house party. We'd all gone around to hers and there was lots of drinking and drugs being passed around. I didn't drink much that night. I was 13 and would struggle to drink when, and then go out and work the next day. So I didn't drink much in this one night. Whilst all the girls were drinking and smoking and snorting, there was music blaring. and Nadine was getting the girls up and dancing, sexualized dancing, Everyone was giggling and whining up the place. I'd only ever seen Nadine being sweet and kind to people. I'd seen her row with boys, but always being nice to her girls. I'd seen her give a few girls outside of our group a proper beating, but never us. Even though I, she was nice, I knew you did, did never fuck with Nadine. Just before we left, she was telling the girls to put makeup on and change their clothes. Most of the girls had jeans and like t-shirts on. Nadine pulled out hot pants and little dresses, telling the girls they could borrow whatever. The girls were so drunk by this time and there was lots of, no, I'm not wearing that. But eventually, all but me of the girls was walking around Nadine's mum's flat in tiny clothes and makeup. I was sitting on the single armchair watching. I had been drinking MD2020 while this was going on, but I started to feel uneasy and put it to a side a long time ago. The uneasiness was not from the drink. You know what else I noticed? Nadine was not drinking or smoking. She had a few buns on the zoot here and there, but that was it. 
something wasn't right. As I watched, there was one thing that was going through my head. Nadine's paying for all this. She's given us all this free drink and drugs and given us her clothes. Why? It was time to go. Everyone got their coats on and now looked dumb in their short and tight clothes with their big jackets. Nadine was fully aware that I stopped joining in a long time ago. I just sat. She came over and bent down so we were face to face. Let's go, blonde, she said. Ah, I shook my head. It was like we both knew what was going to happen without saying a word. All I could hear was a group of girls giggling and shouting and laughing because they were so drunk. She looked at me with her green cat eyes and said, come, nothing will happen to you. And she pulled me up roughly. We ended up in Elephant the Castle. As we walked into the maze of flats, I felt worse and worse. This was not my ends. I had no idea how to get home. What was we even doing here? Yet I said nothing. On the way to Elephant and Castle, Nadine's behaviour had started to change. The girls didn't really clock because they were drunk, but she became less chatty, stopped dancing with them, was looking deep in thought. We arrived at a block of flats and this music was coming out of one of the flats so loud. There was definitely a party going on and it seemed to spill out all over the block. We started to walk up the stairs and there were people everywhere. There were people doing drugs on the block steps, arguing, sexual stuff. By the time we got to the door of the party, I was physically shaking. I had on my big puffer jacket, so you couldn't see, but I was beyond scared. All the girls had gone pretty quiet as well. Just before we got to the door, Nadine turned, grabbed one of the girls that we was with by her hair and just slammed up against the wall. We all jumped like, what, what, Nadine, what are you doing? Nadine had a knife. And she slowly held it to the girl who she had against the wall and held it to her face. And the girl was saying, what, what did I do? What did I do? Over and over again. Nadine looked like a stranger. She looked like angry and evil. She got the knife and pushed it into the girl's face. Listen to me, a little bitch. You're going to go in there and you're going to party. You get me? The girl's eyes were just wide. Not a word said. Nadine walked into the party and we all, we all just followed. Man, it was bad i only saw what was going on in the living room there was around four young girls in there all either in their underwear or no clothes i stood against the hallway wall pushed up against it as hard as i could all around us were men aged i don't know between 15 to 40 the air was thick with a fishy smell and the music was so loud i could barely breathe I could kind of see, in the, see into the room, but it was all dark. But what I could see once my eyes adjusted was a girl about my age sitting on the lap of a man who looked about my dad's age. She was in her knickers and had a loose T-shirt on. The man had his hand under the T-shirt, moving it around, and standing next to them was another man who had his trousers and pants around his ankles, and she was using, he was using her hand to touch him. The girl, the girl was asleep, stone cold, knocked out. She was kind of rested against the man whose lap she was on, just sort of there with her head low into the side. She had no idea what was going on. Even now, at 42, I feel like I can't breathe when I remember that. I could not breathe in that hallway, I tell you now. I looked around and the dean and the girls were gone. Shit, they had left me. Oh my gosh, I'm going to be sick. I can't, I can't, I can't. The front door now had several men in the way blocking it. Not blocking me as they weren't letting me leave. They had no idea I was there, but they were in the way, just joking, just smoking and drinking. But I had to run. I swear down, I've got to run. But I couldn't even move. I looked in the room and everyone looked at me. And suddenly I felt a hand grab mine and I screamed. No, no. I screamed so loud. No, allow it, allow it but the music was so loud you couldn't hear nothing. My head shot up and it was Nadine holding my hand and she was pulling me. I shook my head, big tears in my eyes. No, Nadine, please don't make me go in. Please don't make me go in. I went to scream. She started pulling me and I resisted. But then I realized she was pulling me towards the front door. She held my hand tight and pulled me through and people kept pulling and pulling. But eventually we got out the door and we got down to the bottom of the block. She held my hand and we walked to the bus stop like two little kids. We just didn't say a word. We just walked. The bus come and we got on. We sat at the top of the bus. It was a double decker. I just sat there, not even looking at her. She sat next to me and sort of grabbed me and cuddled me. I just, I just pushed her away. I started crying. Not a single word said between us. When we got off our stop, 
She went to the chicken shop and got us food and she hired it to me, but I didn't eat. She finally looked at me and said, what? I said, Nadine, where's the other girls? She said, we left them there, innit? I put my head down. She said, blonde, you can go home if you want. I nodded and slowly walked off from where from her and went around the corner. And as I got to the corner, I ran home so fast. I wanted to tell my mum, but how, where to start? The next day I decided I weren't going out. But later in the afternoon, Nadine sent for me, sent another girl to my house to get me because I hadn't come out at my usual time. I told the girl, girl I was ill. Later that night, Nadine sent another girl. And she said that Nadine wanted to see me now. Okay. I got dressed and I went to where she was. She just looked like my usual Nadine, all smiles and pretty. She was on her own. She made it very clear to me that if she had wanted to, she could have left me at that party and that could still happen. But she didn't want that to be me because I was different because I was her girl. Nadine was grooming and recruiting, but she was also a victim. She was making it very clear that she had just chosen her second in command, me. Nadine will always be my gray area when understanding my own sexual exploitation.